Inna Shannon was shrouded in mist the morning I arrived. The town lies on the Bandon River in Ireland's southernmost county of Cork. I was here on a pilgrimage of sorts, in search of some evidence of my ancestors who had left here for Boston over a century ago. I had a few fragments of family history to go on. I knew that my great-grandfather, John Mohegan, was born in Inna Shannon in 1856. I knew his parents' names and those of his siblings. But that was it, no knowledge of any family left behind or any long-lost Irish cousins. I began at St. Mary's Church, where the parish priest, Father John O'Donovan, cheerfully opened his safe and removed the baptismal records. This would be the baptismal window from 1825. Then followed a slow search of the names of the newborns of 1856, handwritten by priests long since laid to rest in the churchyard nearby. Here we are, we have one here now. That's it. Is it? That's it. John of Margaret, and of Charles Megan and Ellen Cockerham. Is that yep. the one? That's it. Well, no, you're a, a marvelous man <laughs> if you're on camera. And I say to the whole of the States, it's marvelous to get a person coming back with facts and that we can find it so easily. So everybody else learn from this man. <laughs> As I walked the lanes of Inna Shannon, I wondered what life was like for John Mohegan. What prompted him to leave this lovely place, with no desire he told his children ever to return. For answers, I sought out Dr. Sean Pettit, professor of history at University College, Cork City, who recalled the conditions that drove millions to emigrate in post-famine Ireland. Well, first of all, in 1856, he would have been every night sitting around the tough fire people would have been recounting the awful and awesome happenings of 10 years previously, the famine. Somebody else would have died of fever. Somebody else would have gone to America. This was the great thing. For the people of Ireland, America became the great land of hope and expectation. And if some of the search recalls a tearful past, well, Father O'Donovan offered some perspective. So it's a very sad story, right. but then again, it's a very successful story too, in the sense that I suppose all your ancestors, they went out and by the looks of things, uh, you know, you didn't do too badly. <laughs> Beauty's home, Killarney has been called, and it's easy to see why. The town is surrounded by 23 square miles of lakes, wooded glens, and the highest mountains in Ireland with the wonderful name of McGillicuddy's Reeks. Since Queen Victoria vacationed here in 1861, Killarney has been a must stop for visitors to Ireland. In truth, the bustling and commercial downtown is not what people come here to see. The best way to see Killarney is to get out of town. And what better and more traditional way to do that than to engage a jaunting car? They say this is a chance of a lifetime. They say it's like going to Rome, not seeing the Pope. We don't take a buggy ride in Killarney. No doubt Victoria herself savored Killarney's views from a horse-drawn carriage. And she may well have been driven by a member of the Tagney family. Paul Tagney is the sixth generation in his family to drive a jaunting car. He became a Jarvey, as drivers are called, at the age of nine. He's now a seasoned veteran at 18. So you're 18 and you've been doing this for 10 years? 10 years, my 10th season. Do you like it? Oh yeah, part of my life really now, you know. I know nothing else, you know, it's just uh, how to drive a horse and how to tell Blarney. <laughs> Fasten your seat belt. What do you call your boat? The Brickeen. The Brickeen? It, yeah, it's a, it's a Gaelic word. Ah. Yeah, it means bridge of the little trout. Under the shadow of McGillicuddy's reeks, Donald turns his boat toward the meeting of the waters where Killarney's three lakes meet. This is the meeting of the waters here now, where the three lakes of Killarney meet. That is the old Weir Bridge. They say that bridge is the oldest bridge in the world. Legend, myth, and Irish humor, all in the price of a Killarney boat ride. The next day, you'll be ready to spin round the Ring of Kerry, 
which includes a look back at Killarney from Lady's View, said to have charmed Queen Victoria's ladies-in-waiting more than a century ago. Peter tells us he was back in Killarney in 2018, 25 years after that Chronicle visit. He was curious to know if the young Jarvie, Paul Tagney, was still ferrying tourists around Killarney National Park. Peter found Paul, says he's now a 40-something father, still driving, still telling Blarney. We'll post some of Peter's videos on our Facebook page. Coming up, cruising the River Shannon.